Well, the Italian island of Lampedusa is under a state of emergency after a record number of migrants arrived within a 24-hour period. Many of them have now been transferred to the mainland, but thousands remain in need of assistance. The migrants arrived on small boats from North Africa, with some dying on the journey and during rescue missions. More than 100 boats packed with more than 6,500 people in just over 24 hours. A number that rivals the small island's permanent population. Numbers that are taxing the Coast Guard's capacity to intercept smugglers' vessels and putting Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney's pledge to end irregular immigration to the test. With such a politically charged issue, the human aspect across Mediterranean migration can be easily overshadowed. Many have spent thousands of euros for the perilous journey across the water. But when these human beings, many of whom are still in their teens, arrive in Europe, they find themselves reduced to a mere statistic. They become numbers to be shuffled around by bureaucrats. They become the latest problem to be squabbled over by politicians. While those who are on the ground, those caring for these weary young travellers, do the best they can to ease the situation. We try to give some comfort. We try to give them medical aid, uh, legal aid. We try to give them information. We try to give them some food and shoes, uh, clothes, and then they go toward the northern border. Lampedusa is the southernmost part of Italy and a long-standing flashpoint in the discussion over migration. And while relief agencies do their utmost, infrastructure on such a small island is simply unable to cope when arrival numbers surge. We are more or less with the numbers we had in 2016, which was an exceptional year for for uh, arrivals and landings of migrants on the Italian shores. What seems to be a bit different is that now we, uh, we do have a different government, more uh, right-wing, uh, more anti-migration. Germany has now suspended a voluntary deal to take in migrants landing in Italy, and France announced tougher new measures aimed at stopping migrants coming over the Italian border. These approaches could well be emulated by other northern countries. Many of the new arrivals hope this is the start of a new and better life for them in Europe. But in Brussels, with under a year until EU parliamentary elections, it could mean the start of yet another political standoff over migration. For more, I'd like to welcome Catherine Woolard, the Director of the European Council on Refugees and Exiles. Thank you for taking the time. We have here thousands of people arriving within 24 hours. Why are we seeing so many people arriving now? Uh, it, it is because of the situation in the countries of origin of the people arriving, where we're seeing increased situations of persecution, insecurity, fragility that is le leading people to leave, but also the situation in the countries of transit, let's say, where previously people might have been able to stay working, uh, live in dignity in a country like Tunisia or Libya, and that has become increasingly difficult with uh, the rise, for instance, of racist attacks in Tunisia, which is uh, propelling people to try to move on towards Europe. Mm. So it's a combination of reasons uh, that leads to the numbers of people arriving, um, which nonetheless uh, remain manageable should there be a collective European response, which is what we need now to deal with the urgent situation in Lampedusa. Yeah, I'd like to ask you more about that. It appears that Lampedusa itself is, is beyond its capacity to help these people. Um, but we see Germany and France tightening their borders. Uh, Germany saying it's suspending accepting migrants arriving on Italian shores. Why have we seen that change of mind? So there is ongoing political debate and hostility towards asylum seekers and refugees in many countries of Europe. There's also the perception in certain countries that they're doing more than other countries. Um, whereas, in fact, uh, what is always needed is a collective response. The actual numbers of people arriving are manageable, but they're only manageable if all the countries within the European Union work together. So the, the situation of Italy, um, it, it's not 
Italy's responsibility to deny access to territory and to prevent people arriving. That would be illegal on the part of Italy. If people arrive in Italy, there should then be solidarity with Italy and other countries supporting, uh, offering relocation, for instance, for people who arrive in Italy, providing uh, assistance for people who will receive reception and apply for asylum in Italy. Uh, it's a question of geography, after all. The countries at the external borders uh, are likely to receive people because that's the point at which they enter the EU. Um, and it's still the case that the majority of those arriving in the EU do have uh, international protection needs. Although we often hear the opposite, actually, if we look at the figures from last year, the protection rate, the percentage of people who receive a protection status who are recognised as in need of international protection is very high. So mm. it's not a question of saying that these are not refugees, these are people who don't need protection, so must be prevented from arriving. Yeah. So in your view, what has happened to this European solidarity? Um, just this week, we saw the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, calling for EU unity on migration, but this seems to be an example of it faltering. So there is the ongoing situation of what are the rules in general, and we see the rules there are rather unfavourable actually to the countries at the external border, because the countries responsible for many asylum applications are the countries where people arrive. So in that sense, actually for France or Germany, they benefit from the rules, because it's more likely that Italy or Greece is responsible for people, because that's the first country where they arrive. So that's one issue is, we would argue, the unfairness of the rules in general. Uh, the second issue is then the question of what to do in a situation of crisis. And in that situation, it becomes highly tense and politicised. In a situation like this, uh, arrival of 7,000 people uh, on a small island off the coast of Italy, it's essential that countries step in and don't criticise and attack Italy. Um, the, in many cases, these are people who've been rescued at sea and who Italy, under in respect of its international obligations, has rescued or has allowed to be disembarked there. So the alternative to other countries supporting Italy, unfortunately, would be that Italy refuses to allow rescued people to enter or refuses to rescue people, mm -hmm. um, either of which would lead to suffering um, including additional deaths. Yes. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us on DW News. That is Catherine Willard, Director of the European Council on Refugees and Exiles. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Well, that standoff in Brussels looks likely to get worse, says our correspondent Christine Mundwa, because countries like Germany recently reneged on a pledge to take in migrants from arrival countries like Italy and the far-right government in Rome doesn't want to take them back. Here's Christine. I've just got to give you a little bit of a backstory about what that arrangement was about. Under what's called the European Voluntary Solidarity Mechanism, that's a complicated way to say, uh, EU member states uh, would volunteer to take some asylum seekers uh, from their first arrival countries, keep them for one year, and then return them uh, to the country that they first arrived in. The idea behind this arrangement was to relieve the pressure of, of border countries when they are overwhelmed with arrivals. Um, for that one-year period. Germany now says that Italy is refusing to take migrants back because under EU regulation, which is the Dublin law, uh, a, asylum uh, application must happen in the country that you first arrived in. So Germany is saying that after this initial period, Italy is refusing to take people back. Hence, it is no longer going to be participating uh, in that mechanism. This really is just the latest uh, back and forth that we're seeing standoff, if you will, uh, between northern countries who, they, who themselves say are overwhelmed. Germany says it is overwhelmed with the number of first-time asylum applications, that it can't cope with the numbers of people, that people who are meant to be applying for asylum in the first country they arrive in, this would be Italy or Greece or a first-arrival country, should be going back, but Italy is refusing to take people.
there are accusations between the member states of the other not holding out on its end of uh, the bargain. So Italy's position in refusing to take people back is to say we are overwhelmed um, and we would like for other countries to assist uh, with the load. Uh, there, of course, have been other issues uh, in between that, but this is really Italy saying and another border country saying we're, we're simply overwhelmed. We need more solidarity. But, of course, the rules are, uh, the EU rules on migration are that uh, an asylum application must happen in the first arrival country. So with this kind of a standoff, it almost looks that way because you need other member states to voluntarily take people into their territory, um, house them uh, until such time as that expires and send them back. But if nobody's willing to take them back and nobody wants to take people in, it's not clear how this uh, agreement can be going on any further.